Senator, um, you said just this past week that there will be a contested uh, convention in July. And Governor Casey yes. just made the same point. You also are not hiding the fact that you're recruiting delegates to your side if you get to a second ballot in Cleveland. How far mm -hmm. are you willing to go to recruit delegates? What is over the line in your view and what is acceptable? And give us a specific answer, Senator. Well, listen, there are two stages. The first stages are, are the elections themselves, and we are all in winning the elections. As I mentioned, prior to New York, we'd won five elections in a row. We're fighting to win the elections on Tuesday. We're fighting to win the election uh, in Indiana, and those elections matter. The people have a, a powerful and significant voice. Now, we are likely headed to a contested convention where nobody gets to 1237. What's going to happen then? I'm going to come in with a ton of delegates. Donald Trump is going to come in with a ton of delegates, and one of the two of us is going to be the nominee. And it's going to be a battle to see who can earn the support of a majority of the delegates who have been elected by the people. And it varies state by state, but in most states, there's a subsequent election where the delegates are elected by the people. And we're fighting to win those elections as well. And grassroots activists have been showing up in droves. And, and the core of our support has always been the grassroots, has been the conservative grassroots, the people fighting the Washington establishment. So we've been winning those elections for delegates over and over and over again. And, and that's very well, just encouraging to, because... <laughs> Senator, just to follow up on that, we have this question uh, from yeah. Twitter. Lexi Robbins of Illinois writes the following. I want to know why Senator Ted Cruz and Governor Kasich think a contested convention is good for the GOP. And as you answer that, I want to emphasize that Governor Kasich just said he's not loading a lot of people on an airplane and flying them into Columbus, Ohio for a weekend. Are you considering that, yeah. Senator? Not, not remotely. L listen, everyone would rather see the Republican P Party unite early on by a nominee. I would love to have 1230. L listen, everyone would rather see the Republican P Party unite early on by a nominee. I would love to have 1237 delegates today. That hasn't happened. Uh, what is good for the GOP is to nominate a candidate who can win and who actually has a real substantive agenda. You know, this town hall format is wonderful. I'm very glad we're doing it. But today marks 45 days since the last Republican debate. Frankly, this shouldn't be a town hall. Standing on one side should be John Kasich. On the other side should be Donald Trump. We should have a real debate. And, 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 and listen, you guys would happily host it. The Democrats have had a debate in the, in the time that has passed. Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders respect the voters enough. I called last week for the people of Pennsylvania to, to, to have a debate before Pennsylvania votes, but Donald Trump is terrified to have a debate, and Bill, I'll tell you why. Because he doesn't have an answer to how you solve these problems, to, to how you bring jobs back to America. He prints it on a baseball cap, but when you ask, okay, what are you going to do to bring jobs back to America, he can't defend his economic agenda, his foreign policy. He has suggested withdrawing from NATO. He said he'd be neutral between Israel and the Palestinians. That's why he doesn't want to have a debate. I think the people deserve a debate on issues and substance and ideas. And you asked about what is permissible for wooing delegates. Listen, from our end, so I met with a group of Pennsylvania delegates a couple of days ago. We were backstage. And I was laughing at the Trump campaign claiming that we're whining and dining people. And I said, gosh, do, do, do you see any wine? We didn't even give him a glass of water. I said, we are cheap. I am a fiscal conservative. We were sitting on a bunch of chairs in the, in, in the backstage of an event. And, and I'll tell you what Ken Cuccinelli, who's leading our delegate operation, has explained. He's the former attorney general of Virginia, fantastic conservative. Ken was asked, what goodies are you offering delegates? And Ken said, I'll tell you the goodies we're offering delegates. We're offering delegates free speech and religious liberty and the Second Amendment. We're offering delegates jobs and economic growth and flat tax and repealing Obamacare and standing with Israel and defeating ISIS. Those are the goodies, principles, a president who can be counted on to do what he says he will do. And I'll tell you, the delegates, they're activists who love this country. I told the delegates backstage, listen. I can't send a 737 to fly you to 18 holes of free golf at Mar-a-Lago. That, that's not, that ain't going to happen. But, and and I, what I've told delegates also, at the convention, we're going to try to make every argument we can to persuade you based on facts, based on evidence, based on my record. 
that I am someone who as president will do every single thing I said that I've been standing up and fighting career politicians in Washington and will continue to do so. And what I also promised delegates, I said, let me tell you what we're not going to do. We're not going to threaten. We're not going to bully. We're not going to have campaign staffers do what the Trump team right, has, Senator, which gonna... is threaten to put out the hotel rooms of delegates. And indeed, some we Trump wanna... supporters have been issuing death threats to delegates. That doesn't belong in the process. All right, we Senator, need respect I'm for the Democratic jump in, because we have a... 